Beep, 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 morning, Jester News, Jester News, all this new from New and Approved from the Jester. Hello everyone. Um, hi, um, regarding Sheffield, there'll be more later. It's too gruelling. I just need a break. That's all. All right, okay. It's just gruelling doing it. Okay, so I'll, I'll <coughs> so depressing. <laughs> I'll do more about it later. But we've got three things for you today, okay? So before that, become a warrior teacher. You'll see the adverts going up. Come and join us, come and join us. Enrollment in March. Buy me a coffee, Substack, all the usual. Let's crack on, right? Now then. There was a lady called Kate Forbes, who is doing the old running <clears throat> for the leadership in Scotland, who I've listened to and seems to me to be a very measured and reasonable person. However, m people, nutters have gone off the, off, the, off the bridge because they're upset that she said she didn't agree with gay marriage. So what? I didn't agree with it either. And everybody seems to think that just because somebody believes something personally that in their role as a politician, they'll enforce that. So we're going to get, you know, a Christian hegemony is going to be enforced upon all of us. Oh, my God, no. So what was interesting was that the BBC decided it might be worth having a conversation. So the BBC rang the rather marvellous and the rather wonderful people at LGB Alliance, Bev and Kate, who, if you want measured, calm and reasonable, is the only place to go. Because they're not like me. They're not nuts like me. They're measured, calm and reasonable, right? So they, they, what they did was they rang them up and said, listen, worth talking about. Come on, let's have a, you know, come and have a chat. A chat at about this. Um... And then disinvited them. <laughs> the BBC. You useless tossers. So the BBC has been accused of disinviting a gay group from a programme because it refused because the group refused to attack Kate Forbes. Right? The under fire Scottish National Party leadership hopeful, right? And incidentally, I might we might as well add here uh, at this point, Kate Forbes has had a bloody terrible time of it from the media, and nobody said a damn thing about um, hand, foot and mouth see. What is his name? Gamzu, you, you, useless Hamza. Hamza Yusuf. I know who he is. I'm just kidding. A horrible creature. Nothing about him and his beliefs and his lies and his nonsense and deceit, which is what's apparently being revealed. Right? Can you say misogyny, folks? Eh? The LGB Alliance, LGBA, black is closed brackets, was approached on Friday by BBC One Sunday Morning Live to debate whether traditional values, Christian values, are incompatible with modern politics. What a ridiculous statement to make. What a ridiculous argument to have. So they invited the, uh, them on uh, with a studio panel in the context of Miss Forbes' views on same-sex marriage. So discuss this particular view. So a producer rang them to canvas opinion. Um, and LGB Alliance said it, it completely rejected her views, which I do too. You know, people can have gay marriage. I didn't want it, but people can have it if they want it. I want you know, the government out of the marriage business altogether, but completely rejected her views, but insisted we have freedom of religion and that religious and that religious beliefs are protected under the 2010 Equality Act, which they are, which they are, okay? Um, and shortly after the phone call, the BBC producer sent an email seen by the Telegraph saying, links in the doobra as usual, the programme had decided to go in a different direction with the debate and will no longer be requiring Kate Harris, co-founder, of LGBA. Instead, the BBC invited Natasha Devon, a bisexual campaigner who argued Miss Forbes' views should rule her out from replacing Nicola Sturgeon as Scotland's next first minister. So they got an idiot on who said, <coughs> who said that this woman has wrong think, yep, Miss Forbes, therefore she shouldn't be allowed to become the replacement for Nicola Sturgeon. This is the authoritarian left nutters, isn't it? Bev Jackson, co-founder of the LGBA, said the row showed how the BBC wanted a specific narrative. Yes. Yes, what they, they wanted a specific narrative. She agreed that producers can do what they like with their own programmes, but, if, but she said, if you always, always only present these TQ plus people who are very aggressive and uncompromising, it gives the public a very bad impression of gay people. Bravo. It looks to me as if they wanted what they, what they wanted is a gay organisation to come on and join the attack on her and say you can't have those views. Well, that's what they wanted. It's a cynical character assassination because it's now convenient to attack religion. We totally reject her views on, and then they list many things, but we believe the Equality Act, which protects religion. This happened to them before, LGBA. They got disinvited from Newsnight as well. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting what happened. The dynamics are fascinating, aren't they? So the BBC wants to get them in so that they can have a row about whether this religious per person who's got a faith should be, to, uh, you, know, you know what they're doing there. Um, but when Bev and the crew, Kate, said, no, actually, we agree with her because it's protected. Rather than have a discussion around the fact that this is a protected characteristic and that actually she can hold any views she wants, it doesn't mean she's going to force them on other people or thrust them on other people. 
what they wanted to do was shove two people into a ring. Like, you know, years ago, they used to th put two cocks in a ring and then let them fight. Chickens, you filthy minded beasts. That's what they wanted. They wanted that. So what, in, in actuality, what the BBC was doing was behaving like a, a sort of really awful bullying older sibling. Just wanted to stick two people in a ring and let them scrap with each other as opposed to actually wanting to discuss the issue. It's vile, isn't it? So that was the first thing that I came across, which I thought was terribly interesting. So I thought I wanted to talk about it. But it seems to be a common thread going on with this whole thing. Um, because then we have the situation in the Isle of Man. And this is fascinating. OK, the Isle of Man. Don't know much about the Isle of Man. Sorry, Isle of Man people. Right. But I'm going to try and learn more. OK, the only thing I know about the Isle of Man is that it was a little bit slow in getting the old gay rights going. OK, I know that for a fact. Right. So, however, what they've said here in the Telegraph, Dubris, links, school suspends sex education after drag queen told 11 year olds there are 73 genders. Right. They've suspended their sex education. Good. Good. Right. After drag queen. Let's, they keep saying drag queen. Let's get this straight. This is a queer performativity person who goes and performs, practices queer theory and gender identity ideology. Right. Not a drag queen. A drag queen stays in a bar, entertains and takes as much money off you as they can and gets you as drunk as possible. This is not what that is. OK. One's commercial, the other's ideological. This is a queer performance. Important difference. OK, important difference. The Isle of Man has suspended it after youngsters traumatised with age inappropriate material. Right. Sex education has been suspended in Isle of Man schools and the government has launched an independent review. How quick is that? Now, this is going to be interesting. The Isle of Man. Small, tidy, tidy. You could carpet it in an afternoon. Right. And what are they going to do? The government's already there. This will be interesting to watch unfold because it's like a microcosm, yes? We'll see what's going to happen. So they've uh, suspended their social health and, and economic curriculum. Right, PSHE, yes. The social health and economic curriculum, PSHE, after parents raised the alarm about the graphic, disproportionate, indecent presentation of sexual acts and different gender identities understood to have been taught in lessons. So what was it they were teaching that upset these parents? Well, parents of pupils at Queen Elizabeth II High School in Peel on the Isle of Man have reported that year seven pupils were taught by the drag, by the queer performative, yeah, yeah, queer performer, that there are 73 genders. Just go away. Oh, 73 trombones in the big parade. No, it's 76, isn't it? Can they invent three more so that Menno can do a song? <laughs> 76 gender identities in the big, you know, whatever it may be. In the big con. <laughs> Seven, in, some, some 11 year olds at the school were taught about oral and anal sex. Why? Why are you? Why? What for? You don't have to tell them, right? You don't have to tell them. They know, right? Or they'll be told by their mates and they'll deal with it in their own way. What are you doing? Oh, well, we know what you're doing. What you're trying to do is to get the children to believe in queer theory and gender identity ideology so that you can then use them as tools against parents. That's what they're doing. OK. Oh, did you know, Mum, there are 73 genders? No, there aren't. No, I was told that at school. That's what they're doing in plain sight. OK. So they then <clears throat> they then showed the children just leave kids alone about sex change operations and were shown how skin graft taken from a girl's arm could be used on an artificial penis, according to reports. Well, what did you think was going to happen when you got a queer performance artist in? I know. Let's teach the kids. We'll get a queer performance artist in. That's insane. Absolutely insane. Mind you, the Isle of Man's a small place. So I don't know. But that's what they've done. They've shown... So not only have they, you know, said to them you can have uh, anal sex and masturbation and, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's just... Leave them alone. One teacher told her that she had to teach a group of boys and girls in year seven and eight how to masturbate. I, you know, <laughs> you don't have to teach them. <sighs> what did you teach them? It's it's just it's insane on a, it's insane on a biological and developmental level. Can you imagine you're a child and you've just, you've discovered that if you play with either your you know your 
Garden of Delight or your Stick of Pleasure. Either way, right? Okay. The, if you play with it in a certain way and do it at a certain speed or in a certain rhythm or in a certain place, that all of a sudden you go, oh, and it feels rather nice. What makes you think a teacher's got any more insight into that than the child who's playing with their Garden of Delight or their Stick of Pleasure? None. Even from the point of view of teaching it, it's got, it doesn't hold together, right? Let alone the fact that it's probably just a good idea to say, human beings masturbate, this is when you give yourself pleasure using your genitals. Thank you. Next. Now, let's talk about the Second World War. What's wrong with them? Just give them a leaflet. Sod off. <laughs> yes. You don't have to do this. They'll do this in their peer groups. It's interfering leftism. That's what it is. They want to they wanna give them a, you know, a 1 to 25 chart of how they should do everything. You control freaks. Leave kids alone, right? Now, I just can't believe it. So anyway, so this drag queen said, this queer performative artist said, there are 73 genders, at which point one 11-year-old, who is this 11-year-old? Where are they and how do we send them things? Because we love them. One 11-year-old said, there's only two. <laughs> What's the, what's the bet he's got a strong mum and dad going, don't let these nutters get to you, right? So there's only two, at which point apparently the queer performance artist said, oh, I'm upset, you've upset me. <laughs> Snowflake. <laughs> oh, you've upset me. It's like, I have never met a drag queen as opposed to a queer, queer performance artist. I've never met a drag queen in my life who would be upset by anything anybody said. You know, generally they're pretty tough folk. <laughs> this is just insane. You can imagine him getting ready in the morning. Oh, look, all my queer outfit. <laughs> and then goes in and a child says there's only two genders. And, oh, <laughs> crumbles at the, at the idea that there is. It's absolutely insane. But the government's act quickly and they pause the PSHE. That's exactly what the Welsh government needs to do, the Scottish government needs to do, and the English government needs to do. Pause it. It's wrong. Fundamentally, at its root. It's queer performativity, gender identity ideology, and behaviourist teaching methods designed to control people at the most personal level of their life, which is what they do with their dangly bits. Mind your own business. Right? Just give them information that keeps them safe. Don't pathologise perfectly normal human development. You absolute sickos. Right? So, that was... <laughs> That was the second thing today. So let's do the third one, which is actually a good example of what happens when you do pathologise normal human interactivities and add a dose of homophobia into the mix at the same time. It's also quite relevant um, in that we now have a statement from somebody called Jazz Jennings. Now, if you don't know who Jazz Jennings is, Jazz Jennings was the original poster child for trans who was a boy that was trans by his mother, um, who was obviously homophobe as far as I'm concerned. Um, and Jazz then became a TV sensation. They did a programme about it. They showed opera his operations. They showed everything. And Jazz Jennings has now said that it didn't work. None of it. So they butchered, they butchered a young gay man for no reason. Didn't work, none of it. Christ, these people. Disinvited from having a decent conversation on the BBC was the first part of this today. The second part was an 11-year-old child telling the truth and being removed from the classroom. Child tells the truth, removed from classroom. Teachers in that article were also scared to say no, because they would say to the kids before they started teaching, don't believe me. Teacher has to lie to students in the classroom to avoid action. Student removed for telling truth from classroom. Mau, mau, mau. Ma 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 leftism. Then you have Josh Jennings, who was a young man that was fatally let down by, by a society in America, who is going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is absolutely nothing, nothing about gender identity ideology and the concept of transition that is real, and it is in fact astrogenic and damages anyone who gets involved in it, right from the point where you affirm them socially to the outcome which is likely to be their early death. We've done something terrible, haven't we? We've done something terrible. Anyway, that's enough. Go do the thing. I've got to teach the next few days, but I will come up with some more about Sheffield. I'll put the adverts up for the Warrior Teacher Programme, The Winning Mindset. Come and join us, all right? It's going to be fun. And also, I've got some of my Warrior Teachers are now doing some voice stuff and some video stuff for me so that they can say to you what it is they're doing and why they're doing it. So we're going to do Voices of the Warrior Teachers coming soon. And, interestingly, I had an interview last night with a lovely, lovely man with a silky voice called Benjamin Boyce. So Benjamin Boyce and I will be chewing the fat very shortly on Benjamin's channel, okay? And you'll be able to go and see it. So I'll put the link to Benjamin's channel down below. 
Um, it was fun, but I did what I usually do and talk too much. How am I going to stop myself from doing that? I've always had this problem. Anyway, it's lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much for listening. Jester out. See you soon.